We'll get to pick some bands. You can ban gods. We're going to see five tank boots from Dignitas this time. They'll be like, we see your four. (laughs) We're going to go with five. Team Dignitas is going to ban out Terra and tank boots. (laughs) Honestly, <laughs> we're going. That doesn't like Call of Duty do that now. You can like yes. ban guns. Yes, you, you, you. Scott Gandhi's gonna bring that in, it's man. A, it's an intricate ban phase. Yeah. it's That's fun to watch. The thing. I'll be honest. I do watch a little. That'd CW. be a really interesting change for season to four. To ban like, items, ban items like ban relics or stuff like that. Like ban, like pick Poseidon. I'll, ban I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you right now. Nemesis and Void Shield banned every game. Oh, right now, yeah. <laughs> it would just create such salty drafts by teams. Oh, where it's like you guys can only man. play Freya. We're just gonna ban it. You know, like <laughs> it's the same sort of thing. Like you guys can only play gods that abuse sanctuary. Like. <laughs> It'll be the same sort of stuff. It'd be fun, though. It'd be certainly an interesting change. I'm just going to ban boots. Just all boots? All boots. So, everybody, so you just make the game slower. All, I'm not going to ban any gods, just boots. This is why you don't design. The game would just be really slow. And everybody then I'll would just go pick, really like, slow. What gods have uh, movement speed steroids? <laughs> I just pick all those and be faster than everyone. Team Dignitas going to ban out some of the jungle choices for Obey Alliance. And they don't want to see that working out anytime soon. Al Kwong and Susano taken away from Captain Twig. But Terra yeah, available. Design. We'll see Dignitas banned it out last time, I do believe. So yeah. we'll see if they are willing to first pick it here or the Fafnir, which uh, which Raijin. obviously got them a big pick. So the the, the idea behind the Raijin here, which I like, oh, Fafnir and Terra play the same role, okay? Dignitas is probably okay picking either one of those gods, sure. but Obey is not going to take both. So we may as well get a priority pick that we like outside of that and then get whatever one Obey doesn't take. My problem is the synergy between Jingwei and Terra, which Obey we're not going to see at all. No. I mean, it worked so well. Panda like had so many big flops that sure. really turn fights quickly. Obviously, Jingwei, I, a I, big comfort fit for Ataraxia. So we'll see if Terra is going to make it through to like second or third pick. I don't know if we've seen that yet. No. It'll be very interesting. I, I really and truly thought that we would see the Jingwei Terra. Con- I think that is the most one of the most potent combos in the game. I think it's just Control City. The one and a half second route into a guaranteed knockup. <laughs> or into the a stun, stun into like right. it's. There's a whole lot of setup in that duo lane, plus a lot of sustain, plus global pressure. It definitely yeah. does bring a lot. But Obey electing to go. F- I mean, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. So uh, Bacchus. There it is. Yeah, there's the terror selection. Dignitas, d- that, t- that pick took a while. And I feel. I almost feel like Dignitas was like. <sighs> <laughs> I guess. I guess like, we'll play. I guess we'll take it. But no, so. there's no way Pretty Prime was like, I guess I'll take Vulcan. He no. was like, give me Vulcan. This is this is the Thank Pretty God Prime they took Raijin. I can finally play Vulcan. Exactly. I mean, I, I think I, I think I said it the last time I casted these guys. Uh, variety or uh, Pretty Prime was playing Vulcan before it was meta, before it was cool, right? He's he's he's, he's the hipster Vulcan. He's the he's the hipster Vulcan. He's been playing it forever. Uh, and now that it's meta, he's just Really happy as a pig, and I don't know what. Kronos and Otter are going to be banned out against Team Dignitas. And there's the Ymir ban. Hot Ymir ban. Literally the same two bans it looked like it was going to be. Okay, we'll ban Hunbots from uh, Captain Twig, and then we'll ban a solo laner. Yeah, let's not ban Tyr. Let's get rid of that Ymir. Just way too much work. And there, ra- again into the Arachne. So- Man, like... Neja felt so good there, dude. You've got two knockups and Vulcan burst off the Neja ult, and he still went with the Arachne. I would have got a Wheelish. A Wheelish would have been excellent as well. Yeah. You, you got three, all the you got tools three knockups. Yeah, tough for. But that being said, Dignitas doesn't have any pullable jumps right off the bat. Sure. If they would have had like a Hu Yi or a Nick yeah. or an on her, maybe that would have been the pick. But I mean, again, if it ain't broke. Don't fix it, I guess. The Arachne didn't feel super impactful to me. No, it didn't. It really didn't. And that's been my issue. It was tanky, and it was annoying, but it was just tanky and annoying where you could play Neja and set up your team. But again, you know, you can't argue with the results, and there's a tier for variety. (laughs) And that's the potency of having two S-tier gods for yourself, right? It's like, are you really going to commit two off meta bands to just one player, you know, in the solo lane when he can still, I'm, sh- you know, he's proficient on all these other solo lane gods. He doesn't, it's not like he can only play two. So you force teams to give you one or let your team get tons of S tier picks. Exactly. Everybody seems, everybody in the SPL, not everybody, but most of the players generally have a, if I think of this guy, he's going to be playing this character, right? right. You know, you know, uh, we've got for variety for the longest time it was tier. Now, like I said, I think it's tier and Ymir and creating that situation where 
All right, bad one. I think, it, yeah, I think it's like LG where everyone has played like two characters 85% of the time and yep. then the third or fourth, like a small percentage. Just ban one. It works. It really does. You don't, you think going into the pro scene, you need to be able to play every god at a pro level. And you do. Don't get me wrong. You definitely do. But at the same time, as long as you've got like one or two gods that you can carry a game with yeah. or at least get potentially carry a game with, you're going to be fine most of the time. That's really the key. It's what we've seen a lot of teams really, really rock it hard with. I mean, look at energy. Look at energy and look at old, uh, I don't want to say LG, back when they were back when they were cloud died. Everybody had two go-to gods. So you just can't ban everything out. And it just creates some some really big tension. Obviously, it's pretty prime on his on his own Titan skin. That's that's aren't pretty those prime. the same colors for Obey? Aren't Obey's colors like that kind of like dark blue sort of looking thing? That's probably why I'm not sure. Them. I think they are. I gotta look. I gotta look some more. I, I gotta look up a little bit more about Obey Alliance. They're a, they're honestly a newer uh, organization to my the, to to me personally. They've they're been kinda, around a lot in the console world. Right. They're kind of similar to Soar, more of that YouTube sort of presence before moving into this esports scene, yep. which is really awesome. It, it's a great way to like. It's just such an interesting sort of transition in the gaming world. Like you go for this and then you switch over to the esports side. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they are that sort of uh, yeah, they, they're, that sort of color. They're they're a cool community, I would say, that has now embraced the idea of, of bringing teams into the mix, which is really interesting, like you said, uh, approach to how that works out. Right side harpies, can we take a look at the graphs, please? Uh, right side harpies seem to be split, so that's one for one. And then here on the left side, Obey is going to be able to aggress and claim these for themselves, so it'll be a good look. But the elementals, however, Go to Dignitas. So trades all across the board coming out for the early game clear in the jungle. Ataraxia is going to get about a half a wave by himself, though, because Panda Like did rotate to secure those left side mid harpies. So maybe a little bit. Oh, it looks like he didn't even, it wasn't able to finish any. But it catches the agility, forced to use the purification right away. A perfect route there by Big Man Tings. And that's what you can expect out of Terra. I'm going to be completely dominant there. The Ataraxia play on the Jingwei is certainly strong. So touch on this Apollo, though. I was uh, I was just about to go into it. I like him. Yeah, we didn't really Apollo. talk about it during the draft, but I definitely like it as well. It's just sort of like a, a sun touch style god. You know what yeah. I mean? We saw what kind of work he did a couple weeks ago on it. Uh, and there's a CC, CC chain that Ouch. Terra can provide. Just kind of ignoring the wave, going right for Ataraxia, now being forced to back. Though, if you are going to be on an ADC that's forced to back early in lane, you it's want it to be Jingwei. Wei. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to come right back into the fray. Not too big of a deal. I wonder if Pretty Prime's gonna go tank boots on Vulcan. Ooh. Like a character that he's so used to, and he's probably built pretty much the same way throughout his time playing him. I wonder yeah. if he's willing to make that change already. Same with Variety. He yeah. likes bringing, Variety likes playing this sort of assassin tier, right? Not quite Chapo Transcendence, Transcendence tier. Transcendence tier, dude, I was good to say that, yes. But, but still real, very aggressive that. It's awful, it's not good, you're not tanky enough. Like, I don't understand how he got away with it. To this day, I don't know. But Variety definitely uh, likes to build aggressively on the tier and likes to deal a lot of damage. So we'll see, we'll see if the tank boots will be the direction that everybody goes in, similar to how it worked out last time around. Push on a ducky. Love the aggression out of variety as usual. Yeah, just so comfortable in this matchup. He's comfortable in every matchup as long as he's tier, right? So you're willing to take the trades when he knows he can win them. Variety, watching variety has been an absolute pleasure, to be honest with you, Agro. Last year, I think he was. I mean, I don't think he was a strong player at all. I think he was just, he needed a lot of work. And he put it in. He got the experience he needed on the SPL level on a lower end team. Joined up with Ataraxia and, and, you know, just shed all sorts of preconceived notions about him. Now he's one of the stronger forces out of the solo lane. Lovely to see that turnaround. And Obey's going to take their forces into the enemy jungle. Start off again. Very early aggression. Frostiac low, forced into the ultimate. Variety still gets the kill thanks to the blue stone pendant. But Sun Touch is here, going to force Variety out. They don't get the speed buff, but they do get first the first blood, blood onto Frostiac. Yeah, you mentioned it. The uh, the bluestone pendant and the regular warrior tab eye yep. coming in handy there for variety. Neglected to go for those tank boots, though Captain Twig did do it again. So there, there's one of the big differences about tier versus some of the other selections we had last game is tier has the ability to heal. So he'll be a little bit less tanky than he was last time around, but of course he'll be able to heal himself up. And yeah, there's there's nothing there's nothing more troublesome as a jungler. You're the Thor, you execute the ult, you're in the sky, and then you just fall out of it because of a dot. 
feels That's... bad. It just feels so bad yeah. every time. You, you know, you're Freya, <laughs> you're Apollo, you're any character that goes up into the air, and then you just come crashing back down to reality. I think the worst is Naja. You're mid ult, yes. boom, boom, and then you, you just, just sort like of die. Fail fish, <laughs> just like, yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely not something you uh, you like doing. Here comes Sunny from the side. They're going to surprise that around you a little bit, just with some poke. Nothing too crazy for the moment, but certainly keep an eye on this lane for added aggression. Suntouch was in that right-hand side for quite a bit. I think he missed a wave, or possibly even two, and you can see that he is down about 300 gold now to Ataraxia, who elected to go for these boots start instead of rushing the Devourer's Gauntlets like you're seeing Suntouch do. So we'll see if Ataraxia wants to go for that next, though I believe last game he went into the Ikval into the Aussie, yeah. um, so I don't know which one he's going to want to do. Maybe against this more passive lane, they can both farm up. He's willing to go for that later game option. Here's the ultimate out of variety. Try to find the angle onto Ducky. Not he's quite. able to just wiggle out, no problem. Not quite. Ultimate there used, but Ducky's ultimate is down as well. So some kill potential possibly in that solo lane with neither ultimate available. We could see a jungler rotation. No CC immunity on either of these characters without their ultimates. So we could see Frostiac already looking, but it looks like he's going towards mid. Yeah, trying to make the play towards mid. Lands right on top of Pandalike. They're going to get the follow-up stun and the follow-up damage as well. Pandalike able to jump over some of it. There's the setup, panel like still very low. Frostiac going to be the first to fall, but the rotation out of the short side gives the kill to Ducky as panel like gets traded out. But Dignitas trade their juggler for Obey's support. That's never really the trade you want to make. That being said, Panda like is a level up on Frostiac right now, so maybe it isn't as uneven as you would typically see in that sort of trade, but a great CC chain on a Panda like, but just not quite enough to keep him locked down. He does have those tank boots done, so he does have that CCR, not being able to be CC'd quite as long, tanky enough to withstand it. We saw how long he lived there, mm -hmm. and pretty prime with the ultimate over the top. Nothing else, you wouldn't expect anything else from him, right? Nope. A perfect ultimate from him. Not only does Panda like have the tank boots finished, but Captain Twig has the tank boots finished, and Pretty Prime has the tank boots finished he as did it, well. He did it. Unbelievable. I mean, this we is... only got three this time, though. I guess I guess we're getting better. I mean, this is the adaptation that, that you got to, that you want to make. You know, when when things in, things in might change drastically, very quickly. Got to be able to commit to that change. Captain Twig commits to the gold fear a little bit too hard. He's gonna get aggressed on by Team Dignitas. Love the positioning of Ducky, just making sure to play the option. Won't get the stun, but he gets the slow, the whack. And the kill's going to go to somebody who will belong to the King of the Monkeys. That'll tie the game up 2-2. Two to two. Captain Twig just a little bit greedy trying to pull the Gold Fury there. But nice positioning from Variety. Forces the Purification immediately from Shadow. Shadow there. just gets deleted, man. So much damage out of the mid lane. Even with the tank boots. Even with but the... But whenever you can, no matter what boots you have, you can lay down that turret and paint them with the backfire. You're going to be doing a ton of damage regardless. Yep. Now the Gold Fury getting low here for Obey. Big Man Tings around the back, pops the Terra's Blessing, but it's only him, it looks like. Ver it, Ver start it back up. Panda like gets it as well. 25% of the Gold Fury. There's the Vulcan ult, and that'll secure it. Goes to Red Team. And that's Team Obey Alliance able to push up a little bit. And the nice 2,000 gold lead going to obey. Just knowing that you have this secure with the Vulcan ultimate, right? That's pretty prime saying, look, guys, I know how much damage I do. I've got this. Just let me secure this. Even with a dot coming in from Terra, not going to be enough. Did they steal that red buff? No, they didn't. Close. Close. Ducky with a cheeky little Jingu bang over the top almost took it away. When you're a mid-mage, I think a big part of your skill set needs to be identifying the amount of damage that you can do specifically towards objectives, right? In a game without a Wrath, the mid-mage is the Wrath. Panda like is just smoked out by your Raijin. Shadow Nightmare playing very aggressive, surprising the support. Yeah, Captain Twig now going aggressive on this right-hand side, forcing out the Sanctuary from Frostiac, but it doesn't look like he wants to chase deeper. Good call as Big Man Ting is coming around the corner. Definitely could have spelled trouble for Captain Twig. Variety able to push out Ducky just for now. 
healing up a little bit as well. I like this build from Captain Twig now. So last game, I believe he went straight into the Void Shield. Yes, he went which, Void Shield. Which I like as well. But going this Boxing Ichabal, wanting to be up in Frosty Axe face. He has the two-level lead. He can invade these buffs on timer. And just being there and being, he's tanky and doing damage with that Ichabal in the middle of the fight. He's going to need to build some power now as he has like 20 power in that build, which is not really anything. But as long as he can grab some power in his coming items, I like this kind of boxing style build he's gone for. Captain Twig going to have to focus on that just a little bit. Burning the Purification to avoid the stun on a terror. Nice play. And Variety dashes through, but still gets rooted by Big Man Tings. But Big Man Tings in kind of trouble now. Use both dashes. Yeah, forced to ultimate. If he would have dashed back towards his tower, he yep. doesn't have to ult there. But because he got a little bit greedy, heading towards Captain Twig, forced to burn it. And there, the, speaking of burned, the Ataraxia ult having uh, been forced by Sun Touch. Yeah, the, hearing the Terra, hearing the Terra change might have scared him just a little bit. So Ataraxia plays it a little bit safe. And maybe he ults there because they don't have any ward coverage on that Gold Fury. Hearing that ultimate pops, knowing that the other team has a Thor that can come crashing down on you, you'd rather use that cooldown, especially whenever your purification isn't available. Hold on there, big double fearless by Variety. And the follow-up damage from Obey Alliance, not there just yet, but Panda like shows up on the back, knocking up Frosty, yeah, gets him with the ultimate, gets him with the stun, a couple more basic will do it, but he can't quite find it. Mid lane, you see a chase underneath the tower is gonna be the Raijin, Shadow Nightmare can't make it happen, and now Sun Touch shows up finally from the sky, dealing damage to Ataraxia, but unable to again find a kill. So a lot of damage, a lot of spread out, a lot of crowd control, a lot of aggression, but much ado about nothing. Nobody able to really find a kill here. No kills. Obey just a little bit too tanky with all these sets of tank boots, but they don't have the damage that they may that they would have if they had gone a more traditional route. So just trading poke, but right now. Obey's only going to get stronger with these tank boots, right? They're going to get more damage online. That being said, Dignitas is in the same sort of boat. They're only going to be able to punch through these tank boots a little bit quicker. I would have really liked to see some more early penetration come out from Dignitas. If you can get some early pen items, get an early Obsidian Shard, something like that on the middle laner, you don't have to worry as much because you're punching through that tank armor. Again, Adorax's ultimate going to be chased out thanks to Sun Touch dashing forward, getting aggressive. Sun Touch has really fallen, come, become a very potent hunter. Uh, I think early in the season, he was, if he's on the fray, he gets to win. And if not, he had some struggles. But he's been able to ex not only expand his god pool, but also expand his capability in that long lane. And it's, he's been a pleasure to watch so far. Sun Touch definitely deserving of respect in that duo lane. You don't want to just take boxing fights, you know, just because yeah. he's not a traditional ADC. Because at this point, he is a traditional ADC. And he's definitely shown that through He's his earned play. it over the past four weeks for sure. Captain Twig now getting rooted out and stunned. Dashing forward with Big Man Tings and the poke coming out from a ducky as well. Well, meanwhile, fighting the side, Rage is on. Pretty probably going to launch his ultimate right on top of BMT and just toasts him down. Pretty Prime gets the kill, two in total. How does he do it? Every ult is like perfect. Uh, he dropped that right in between two people to hit them both. Yep. I mean, just on the mark yet again. Stacking up that Doom Orb, 47 stacks. You, now is when that Vulcan ult's going to start to really hurt. Shadow, Mind, Shadow Nightmare being forced out and the ultimate from Ducky as well, for all from one burp. Frosty, I can't make it to the party either. As Variety's able to push him out, quite literally, with the Fearless. And that Tier 1 tower going to just fall down as Obey gets it, thanks to the zoning coming out from everybody. Look at Variety. He's pushing he's pushing Ducky into the back, behind back Harpies. I mean, that's not just zoning at that point. That's just being rude. He could have just done the speed buff, but why do the speed buff whenever you can do damage to the other team, right? May as well have some fun. Well, his team, again, that's the soul leader providing the spacing so his team can take the objectives behind him, whether it's a tower or a speed buff. Variety's going to give his team the space. And 1-0-2 oh, and two right now, sitting at the top of the damage chart. has been on point with the Fearless, been on point with the Ultimates as well. Just doing so much for Obey right now. Watching Variety play the Tier versus the Ymir, Dignitas is going to get spicy here and start a Gold Fury. And honestly, Twig is far, Pretty Prime's further. No ultimate available on the Vulcan. This could go the way of Dignitas, and it certainly will. Great Gold Fury call coming out of the black and yellow. And as long as they disperse here, Aggro, that was an amazing play. Ducky going to be caught out by that belly flop, though. Ataraxia throwing in the shots. Going to use the Ox Form to knock up multiple people. And Captain Twig looks like he wants to chase this down. This is only a problem for Dignitas if more than one person dies. If Ducky dies to the Gold Fury, it's totally fine. But if more players die, try to protect Ducky, that'll be an issue. It looked like Dignitas were going to fall into that trap, but they think better of it.
and they allow Dignitas, uh, and they allow Obey to take out the solo lane. But like I said, trading a solo lane for a gold fury, that's a good play. Definitely worth it. A nice call, like you mentioned, from o or Dignitas, rather. And looking at the levels right now, the solo laners actually both level 13, basically even with everyone else in the game. We see Pretty Prime level 14. We see Suntouch level 14. Ataraxia a little bit above that. But there's just been so much action in that solo side of the map that they haven't been able to get the usual farm that they're used to. And is that why we saw that excellent call out of Dignitas? What opened the window for Dig to just sort of sneak that Gold Fury out from under Obey? Obey stayed a little bit too long, I think, getting that speed buff. Maybe if Variety starts it and then the team can finish it real quick instead of pushing them out. I mean, <laughs> that's and it really does come down to that sometimes. A two to three second difference. Yeah. If Pretty Prime is two to three seconds closer, he may have the ultimate available to try and steal it. But uh, Dignitas is recognizing the tiny window that they had and committing fully. And that's the most important part. When you're trying to execute a quick call like that, you need full trust in your shot caller. And we saw it there from Dignitas. And, it, you know, it's, it's easy to forget because Dignitas hasn't had much success lately. But this is a veteran squad. Shadow Nightmare has been playing for a long time. Suntouch, one of the oldest Smite players in the scene, right? So definitely using their skills there. Down comes Frosty. I get a stun out Variety. That time, Variety a little bit too forward. And the Shadow Nightmare able to capitalize off of a great initiation from Frostyak and get the kill. Got a little too greedy using that Fearless under the Tier 2 tower on the Ducky. Knowing his team is coming, the Terra's Blessing pop. And then all of a sudden, Shadows and Shadow Nightmare is there taunting yep. him in and making sure Variety can't use that Lawbringer to get away. And now Shadow Nightmare has that Warlock Sash online. He's completed a second item. It's a, you know, we're into 15 minutes. He's only got 20 stacks, so he's a little bit behind in that respect. But still, once you get it done, it's always a sigh of relief as you, for you as a mid laner. Yeah. You're like, finally, I can just worry about stacking and not worry about how much gold I'm saving, not buying enough wards because I have to get the stack this expensive stacking item online. And now we'll have the health to deal with the Earthshaker from Pretty Prime. We saw it a lot, I believe, in the console league this last week or maybe it was SPL yesterday, uh, we see the Vulcan just wait to use their ultimate for the Raijin ultimate. Just wait until was, Raijin is was, yeah, this North mobile America yesterday. turret. Just wait for him to use it and then immediately drop it on top of him. And Pretty Prime, of course, knows that. You know, he's oh, the yeah. penultimate Vulcan player. And so in order to counteract that, Shadow Nightmare says, okay, I'm just going to get some more raw health. We'll see if that's enough, though, because <laughs> I don't know, man. Late game Vulcan ult is going to decimate you no matter how no much matter health you have. Even if he's going to be rocking the, the tank boots. But with throughout the mid game, it is going to make a big difference having that raw For sure. HP. I like the call from Shadow Nightmare, recognizing the innate weakness that his god has against his lane mate and building to counteract it. With that in mind, he's got to actually stack it up, So though, so far. Just now, approaching 40 stacks. So he'll be able to make the impact very soon. Ataraxia was really near the top of the damage charts all throughout the last game. It was Pretty Prime and then Ataraxia right underneath him. But Ataraxia has really been shut down overall this game by Suntouch. Even though he's two levels up, we see constantly seen that ult getting for us. And now the solo lane tower, the dual lane tower, going the way of Suntouch. Yeah, Suntouch has provided a lot of pressure here. Uh, over there in the left-hand side. Here's the fight. Suntouch going to make his way over, thanks to the ultimate. Obey, spread out. Everybody spread out, in fact. And that's going to bring Suntouch be very aggressive. Dashing through Pandalike. Shell's going to be popped. Look at Shadow Nightmare trying to find the flank. Goes and finds the hit onto the Raiju. But Ataraxia able to take out Frosty. Shadow Nightmare has no ultimate available. He's surrounded by players. But there's the push forward. Here it comes. Oh, he gets two in the Fearless. Puts down Shadow Nightmare. Pretty Prime just barely off the mark. Just not quite enough damage to kill Sun Touch there. But just a nice job of collapsing all of Dignitas in and then spreading them out, making sure that people are out of position. Frostyak going a little bit too deep. Then Shadow Nightmare along that left-hand side, left alone. And that means that Obey can just kind of pick and choose their targets. Okay, let's kill Frostyak. Hey, look, Shadow Nightmare's over here by himself. And then it all falls apart from there for Dignitas. Now a tier two tower in middle and another tier two tower in the solo lane. This is looking kind of familiar, F dot. Yeah, just a little bit. Getting uh, deja vu all over again here in game number two. Will be able to strip a lot of things away from their opposition. 18 minutes on the clock, 11 kills in total, and Obey own seven of them. And you can see they're leading 6,300 gold as well. Obey certainly really looking strong here as the placement round of the fall split, the first half of the fall split, comes to a close, certainly making a, a case for themselves. They were uh, they were one of the stronger teams coming out of the gate, 
and they were one of the stronger teams coming to the close of the gate as well. I believe their only two losses have been to the other top two teams, right? Yes. Energy and Bipolar Method. Bipolar Method. And they've looked really, really strong in every other set, continuing that trend up against Dignitas today. And in that last fight, it's it's one of those situations where it's really hard to say, but I think that I would have liked to see Suntouch continue to push down that left-hand side. Ataraxia yeah. had committed to the middle lane, and Obey had committed to pushing down that Tier 2 tower. And Suntouch ulted pretty early on, and that's usually not the Apollo player's call, right? That's your, you know, whoever your shot caller is saying, okay, we're fighting, come now. But if Suntouch was able to delay that a little bit, he just got there a little early, it felt like. You know, he... He just got there a little early I agree. in the fight. In the fight, kind of, they just waited and then took the fight from there. I agree. You know, as a there's a nice knock up on the Ducky and Captain Twig to chase down the solo inner Terra providing a little bit of help for Ducky. And it, providing help for Shadow Nightmare, who's in a lot of trouble. Suntouch going to come dug, dragging down, but Variety just misses the Fearless. Ultimate going to work out for Ducky as well. And Pretty Prime Ultimate just a little bit too late. That backfire. So much damage on a Frosty Egg. Sanctuary saves the life until Variety gets the Swag Dog right on top. There's a big man Tings in trouble now underneath the tower. But Obey not providing too much damage onto the big tank. So they're going to fall back and start looking at the tower in tier one on the left side. Variety totally okay with tanking that up. Pretty Prime has been like a quarter health this entire time, just throwing things from a distance. Panda like cut, a, cut out a little bit too much there. We didn't see a clap that time. No. Really. Kind of surprised, <laughs> to be honest with you. We didn't see the clap come but out of Panda like. Panda like dies. Meanwhile, this team able to take out that tier one tower, pushing themselves 500 gold into Plus the, the gold fury. Plus, oh, Obey yeah. did the Gold Fury on the back end, and that's the pets, if you will, from Obey, right? The spiders from Arachne tanking it up and the turret from Pretty Prime yep. just get providing consistent damage onto these objectives. Now, that doesn't work for towers, and so their tower siege isn't quite as strong, though they do have a pretty solid one overall because of Ataraxia. But against these uh, more stationary objectives, the Gold Fury and the Fire Giant, those pets on the side of Obey definitely putting in work. And we're actually also going to boost some of his crit as well with that rage. So expect a lot of the uh, explosive bolts to be a little bit more explosive. Well, uh, a little extra damage on the splash damage. Remember that? Remember when I said splash because nope. of the water gun? Nope, I forgot. Well, now you remember. <laughs> That's it's, unfortunate. It splashes. That's terrible. And it does damage in an area. This is terrible. You're, you're That's just, debatable. You're destroying Nice right blink, now. Fearless. Frostiac way too late on the See purification. Ya. And there's going to be Variety searching for the kill. Can't catch up, but a nice wall. Going to protect and prevent the onslaught. Ducky in a little bit of trouble. Pushed into the wall. Fearless power cleave. And he's going to get smoked out. Captain Twig on the Arachnid gets the credit for the kill. Big Man Ting's able to stun out one, but gets knocked up himself. One more time. Fearless power cleave. Arachne, that's the combo. Variety is just pushing everyone around. He's like a bulldozer this game. Just oh, yeah. taking some taking some uh, dirt or whatever and just pushing it all around the map. First it's Frostiac, then it's Ducky, then it's Big Man Tings. All the while though, Suntouch pushing down this left hand side with the help of Shadow Nightmare. But while they're doing that, the Fire Giant's being started up for Obey. And this is a great play from Obey. Just gonna take their spacing and earn their Fire Giant. Frostiac shows up and he's he got it Frosty able got to it. steal it Frosty wow Act, so close now it looks like shadow nightmare gonna try and pick up variety is going to be able to he might be in some trouble though committed the dash and pretty prime is here to punish him obey felt too comfortable there that's exactly what happened they go hey there's three people in mid lane nobody's really showing up there's a thor in the game every time there's a thor you gotta be careful i think i mean you saw pretty prime walk away from it right but not before he shot the ultimate to try and secure it maybe if he's there you know you could see the damage that you're yep. doing you know you can secure it perfectly again a half a second window for frosty act to secure it and he did. And we even saw Panda like jump the ultimate and knock him up as soon as he landed. And we saw one tick of Berserker's Barrage happen. And that's what ended up stealing the Fire Giant. Again, a little bit of a misplay from Obey, leaving the door open just a smidge. And Dignitas takes advantage, stealing yet another Fire Giant away from the Alliance. I think that's a little bit more forgivable than the Big Man Tings one, right? I'd agree with that. When yeah. Big Man Tings is just throwing a Fafnir hammer and all you have to do is literally look at him, I think that's a little bit more egregious. But down from the sky comes Trostiak. You still have to be aware of that. I mean, that's still an issue. And sure, Pretty Prime was able to get a kill after the fact, but. 
Uh, the only one with, with Fire Giant is Sun Touch and, you know, right. Obey able to make the comeback, but you still got to think about those plays. The first time and the second time, I think Obey just felt a little bit too comfortable on the Fire Giant. Let's put it this way. Obey just delayed their win by about five minutes. It, yeah. it, that's what it looks like at this point, right? Last game, they delayed their, their victory march, if you will. And this time, like you said, only one person with Fire Giant, but that is Sun Touch. And now Sun Touch has that ability to go and split push very and, yeah. effectively using that Fire Giant buff. If you had to pick one person to have it on Absolutely. Dignitas, it would without a doubt be Sun Touch right that was, now. That was going to be my follow-up statement. Sun Touch now, now he now he has to make the, the commitment to the split push. Before, we were sort of, you know, on the fence. I like to split push play into the Apollo more often than not, but it winds up being a team thing, whether or not you want to fight the fight versus go for the split push. Now with the Fire Giant on Sun Touch, that sort of dictates the play style. We saw it earlier in the day, Energy versus Cyclone, Vote NBK on that Apollo, really using that ultimate exclusively to team fight with, using yep. it for CC immunity, delaying sometimes, and then crashing down on priority targets. Whereas Sun Touch has used it more a little bit split push oriented. And now we, I'd like to see him fully commit to that split push. The accidental Apollo pick as well. It was supposed to be a Shibalaki. Yeah, isn't that funny? That was really funny. And you know Ice Ice Baby's like, yo, I knew I had the right pick. Because the Apollo you should wound listen to me in picks and bands more. That's what he was saying. The Apollo wound up being one of the more impactful players in the game. Without so. a doubt. I mean, Vote <laughs> NBK had an awesome set. I like Sun Touch's build. I think I think this build is is wonderful on on the Apollo. Go I ahead. don't know if I totally agree with that. Just because if where he's full committing to the split push, the crit doesn't do you a lot of good. So sure. I would have almost liked to see a Titan's Bane instead, uh, accentuating that split push. Idea. I agree. I, th I, I would like to see the Titan's Bane instead, uh, but I, I like everything else. And we'll talk a little bit about it in a moment. Shadow Nightmare Ultimate not going to have too much of an impact there. Does some damage, but maybe a little bit premature. Now Ataraxia in some trouble. Pretty Prime using the ultimate, but Sun Touch sanctuaries it out. Frosty Ag able to find an exit until Variety blinks. Fearless into the power cleave. There's not a hammer available for a couple of seconds for Variety. He'll still be able to get out thanks to the speed buff. Variety has just been on point. I mean, this entire set, of Variety has been completely on point. Pretty Prime has as well. I think we've seen one ultimate off the mark sure. from him. That one, I'm not going to count. You know, he was on the mark. It just... You, when you force a relic, that's still a win most of the time. Uh, but yeah, variety's really been the story for me this set. What, the Ymir game one, and now just constant fearless power cleave combos. What I like well, about course, variety, there's the gold fury, and that one's going to go the way of Obey, despite Sun Touch's best Irons impersonation. Not going to be able to find it. And Obey still pushing for the kills. Big Man Ting's chased out. Ducky in trouble. There's the ultimate out of the big monkey. And Shadow Nightmare jumps right in front of Variety, who's dealing damage to Sun Touch every step of the way. Shadow Nightmare gets collapsed on. Doesn't have the Thunder Crash available to him. Crit, the crit, 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 crit. And Captain, Ni and Captain Twig able to take down Shadow Nightmare. Pretty Prime stuck in an awkward situation, but the entirety of Obey is here to support him. D D Ducky, the only one left on the map, except for Sun Touch, who comes crashing in. Try to make it happen but cannot and wonderful turret placement out of a pretty prime will just provide damage as players wind up trying to find the retreat every time i see a vulcan player that's one of the things i always want to talk about is turret placement it is yep. what separates the good vulcans from the pretty primes of the world his turret placement is always on point it's such a long cooldown you need to be making sure you're making the most of every single turret placement and pretty prime just having the forethought it, you know it's like they might be here i'm gonna put this here so they can't be where they want to be yeah you can you, a lot of a lot of the uh, vulcan players you're just gonna go to the tower start basic attacking, drop the turret just as a button to press. But instead, Pretty Prime takes the initiative, walks forward, puts it down in front so that once Variety is able to space the enemy out, they get hit by the turret. Especially in the laning phase, that there's a lot of interactions with waiting for your opponent's clear. Fire Giant now. Keep an eye on everybody on the map. Very low. Oh my this god, it's gonna get stolen again! It's so beautiful! It gets stolen again! Oh, Sunny gets it with the so beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. Obey have to be living right now. They've given up three fire giants this set. Ugh. They do pick up two kills. They use the ultimate again, and it still didn't matter. He got it. Shadow Nightmare again. Ultimate just not gonna do enough damage. In fact, he'll be the one taking damage. Panda like on the good side of that kill. Void Stone help. Put him out along the way. Ton of damage on that Bacchus. Frostiac purifies. Well, 
A little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> the Captain you Twig able get, to kill him anyway. You still get four kills, right? Yeah. But how you lose another Fire Giant to an unbelievably timed steal. Again, through the Vulcan ult, the So Beautiful secures it for Dignitas, but it looks like it's not going to be enough for Fall. Ducky's going to go up to the ultimate, but Obey is going to be looking for the win here. Going right on to the Titan, ladies and gentlemen. Dignitas took game number one. This time, Obey has three times the amount of kills, 18 to 6. As far as that's concerned, well, make it seven. Dignitas able to find one at the marker, but this one goes down in 28, almost 29 minutes of play, and Dignitas take the win up 11,000. That was fun. That was, that was there was a lot of fun stuff in that set. O obey, all right. Obey the first. I don't. The Just first couple of times, as long as they they're away from fire giants, yeah, you're good. But like, we'll see if they want to be a little bit gun shy around that objective once we get to land, because that's the sort of thing that can get into your head, right? Like, oh man, we're losing every fire giant. I remember there was a time on Soar where we were losing all these objectives, the steals, and it got us kind of gun shy. And yeah. Eventually, we needed to be like, look, we just need to play better. It's not, it's not bad luck or anything like that. It's just we just need to do a better job and focus on the objective play. It's something we practice on consistently until we got over that. I'm sure Obey will get there they're going to be just fine they look great in every other part of the yeah, game except sure. securing the fire giants and and you know that that's something that i i want to you know is that it seems like an issue because it once or tw once even maybe once or twice i'll say look luck of the draw it just kind of happens we've seen it go down but three times the objectives are being stolen by something that quote unquote shouldn't really happen I don't know. I think I think that's Obey feeling a little bit too comfortable around those objectives. It's only an issue if you let it become an issue, if you let it get into your head. And I'm sure Obey is saying, you know, I'm sure they're watching the replay back later and being like, okay, that's kind of funny, like that we just <laughs> lost three objectives. You know, I can't believe we did that. It's like, okay, guys, but seriously, let's make sure we secure those. But let's make sure we secure Variety Ymir. These walls were unbelievable game one. And even if they ban the Ymir like they did in game two, you've still got the tier for them. I, I like the two different approaches. It's funny because they're two almost opposite approaches and Variety able to make it happen. On the Ymir, he traps you in and gets the kill. On Variety, he pushes you away and either gets the kill by... So Ymir traps you in and gets the kill with his team. Variety on tier either pushes you, pushes you away and either gets the kill by himself or his team follows up and gets the objective. So either way, Variety's trying to find a way either trapping you in or pushing you out, but still the same old response with the win. It all comes down to crowd control and positioning on both of those gods and Variety playing them supremely right Absolutely. now. Display has been a little bit too strong for Team Dignitas this time around. Hungry for more. They get picked up by Obey Alliance, and they stay just as strong as we've seen them throughout the course of the season. Captain Anoraxia on the line. Congratulations on your win today, Nate. You guys looked fantastic. How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah, thank you. One of my favorite things to watch is really this Ymir that has developed for Variety. We spent pretty much the entire set talking about Mr. Harry Cummings and, and his transition. I think the old story is about, you know, Variety improving. We've seen him be a great player, and now he's just continuing. So how, is it, how has it been sort of watching this and have you facilitated it at all? Uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, yeah, I think I said this last but. Harry's always been this good, you know, in my eyes. So there's no growth for me, really. You know, there's growth as a team, but him as a player, he's just, you know, he's always been this good. And I'm really, really happy for him that he can finally change some opinions and he's getting a lot of love, which he definitely deserves because he's been playing absolutely phenomenally this season. Okay, Nate, talk to me about the tank boots. Your team is just going them <laughs> all the time. Do you guys just feel that they're strong on every roll right now? Because in game one, you were the only one to not buy them on your team. Yeah, and I died for it, you know? I definitely think it's good, <laughs> I think. Uh, no, I mean, they, they got buffed this week, right? Uh, yep. They're kind of broken. I think if you if you just put it, you know, on paper, so it's 1,400 gold, you get your movement speed, really important. You get, you know, you get a little bit less power than the damage option, but you get 30% CCR, and then the, the change was you get 50 protections yeah. if you stack them up. 50 protection. It's, you know, there's, there's just too many stats for 1,400 gold, so I think if every roll... I think Hunter's the one that can get away with it because they're kind of slippery and they shouldn't really get hit in the first place. But um, every other role should really just be picking him up because yeah, it's, it's, it's just too good, you know? Going back to the specifics, uh, Captain Twig played this Arachne twice uh, in these matchups. What is it that Obey Alliance look for in the Arachne? How, what's the intended impact for this character? I, I wish I could tell you the answer for this one. But, um, <laughs> 
it, it was just, you know, in picking bands, we got a few jungles banned out as it goes. And Twig's like, give me Arachne. And then, you know, Panda Light's like, no, 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 don't pick Arachne. We'll lose. We can't lose. We can't lose. And, you know, we lock it in and it worked out. So Arachne every game at LAN, right? Because I think won so, it. Yeah. yeah. I think this is our new thing, you know? A little bit of trust in the team goes a long way. Uh, and so speaking of which, Obey Alliance, they must trust you guys. You wind up picking up uh, one of the, or they wind up picking you guys up. What can you tell us about the new organization, how they're treating you, and, you know, the future of the team? I have to say, you know, I've been around for Smite for a while now. I've managed, uh, you know, I've had the pleasure to be on a few teams mm -hmm. uh, with a few organizations. And for me, this is the first time where we've really meshed with a, with an organization so much. It's not, you know, usually there's this, this team organization divide and it's, they, you know, they're never completely one. But even though we've only been with them for a couple of days now, it, it feels like we're just all one unit, which is really, really nice to be a part of. And, you know, I couldn't say this about some previous organizations, but I really feel like I'm going to be friends with, you know, everyone in Obey which is not an experience I've had before. That's awesome. That's that's some of the, the more fun times that you've got. So. What you want to hear? Exactly. They, uh, thank you very much. Congrats on your wins. Any shout-outs you want to give before we let you go, buddy? Yeah, just one shout-out to my boy, Irens. He might not be in Dignitas anymore, but he was with him in spirit tonight as he stole, what, three out of four fire giants. I think you... we, we need to work on that, you know? They, uh, Dignitas just said, I'm praying to Irens, and then yeah. throws out an ability, steals it. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks again, Nate. Congrats, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. All teams coming to land, of course. Very exciting. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be next week. This is pretty much the conclusion to our placement round as we take a look at some of the games we saw on Europe today. Uh, that was just the conclusion of game number three. We're going to head into our fourth and final one. We've got Bipolar Method uh, versus Crinshrew. How number, do you feel about that? Number one seed. Bipolar method. Kind of surprising. You know, Energy is the premier EU team, mm -hmm. right? Not this split. Bipolar method doing a great job. We'll see if they want to pull. They might not want to show their hand having yeah. that first seed locked up. Maybe they'll bring out something spicy a little bit in this last game. But, you know, they like their competitive guys. They want to go in and win. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a great set to watch. It's always spicy when it comes to bipolar always. method, to be honest with you. They've got their own little brand of smite. And you're going to see it in just a few. We'll be right back with the conclusion to the European Fall Place. Round. See you soon in just a few.